Hello and welcome to today's video as we recap Play-Ins Day 2 at Worlds 2024. Um, as you can see by the board, apparently somebody yesterday couldn't see that the board indicated who won and who lost. Um, Gam won 2-0, two, two to zero. just you see the 2 and the 0 underneath the names. And 100 Thieves, Rainbow 7, Rainbow 7, 2-1. Uh, apparently that wasn't clear enough yesterday, so um, you know, just, just so everyone's on the same page. Um, other things from yesterday's video, uh, had a couple, you know, pain gaming fans get up in their feels a bit, their panties in a wad, if you will, which if you wear panties, no, nope. no shame. I'm not going to yuck someone else's yum, do whatever you got to do. Um, but they got upset in the comment section. I just want to reiterate that although a good portion of my subscriber base are from Brazil, I'm never going to kiss Brazil's ass, and I don't expect Brazilian fans really to ex think I'm going to kiss their ass, but these dozen or so thought I would. Um, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to kiss anyone's ass, so um, I don't owe you shit, and I don't expect you to owe me shit. So um, let's just keep that straight with each other uh, as I look at you and you comment down below um, just for perspective. Now, um, as far as this is concerned, GAM Esports and SoftBank Hawks Gaming. Um, GAM, I predicted to win 2-1. I went 1-1 one one on the day. Had 100 Thieves winning 2-1. Um, but GAM coming out strong. Evie on the Rumble. I mean, you put him on a carry-oriented pick. Uh, Evie is very coin flip. Sometimes you get something decent. And you maybe on a good day, you could keep up with Kiea. But on an average, he won't. And he didn't. Um, Kiea leading the way, 12-2, 14, 28% of damage. Uh, Easy Love, 13, 3, 17, played team fights out very well. Evie, because he was on a rumble, led in damage, um, but went 3, 7, 6 with 29% of the team's um, damage, like I said, so he led the way. Now, early game, sloppy out of Gammy Sports. We saw, especially in game one, clearly uh, SBH going bot side, trying to make things happen. Um, and, and succeeding, getting the zigs ahead. But it didn't really make a difference as the game went along. Gam crawled back into it. Kiea very strong on the Aurora top lane, I believe, in both games. Um, we saw that Emo even played decent. Um, if there was a moment where a laner or a, team or a player on Gam were behind, it was Emo. Into Dasher. Dasher doing well on the Lucian and then the LeBlanc. Um, I thought maybe there was potential there for Dasher to take a game by himself he was not capable of doing that and pulling it off but there were moments for them uh levi into forest of course was going to be a diffy and as the games transpired it was shivana being picked by levi a pick that um in the major regions we didn't see a lot of success with uh but levi drawing bands on the shivana for a l much of the summer split and that kind of just continued to show face in this matchup um but we also have to keep in mind it is vietnam versus japan that does not indicate really that Shivana is going to be all that strong. And not to say that Japan is a bad team, but that these teams are, are evenly matched. I mean, it was a 2-0, but they are still, you know, minor region teams. So when you do make a pick that may be off meta, you may just be able to hands dip your opponent. And Levi is one of the best minor region players, I mean, hell, ever probably if you look at his entire career. So, I mean, it's not a big, it's not a big shock for him to pull out of Shivana and do very well. Um, as far as the rest is concerned, though, like I said, Easy Love played out team fights pretty well as the games went along. Um, you know, a lot of people had SoftBank Hawks pretty high on their list because they're the two second seed from PCS. And I did say the second seed from PCS has been competitive in, in the past. Um, but I also think of years like Beyond Gaming that struggled at Worlds 2022, for example. As a PCS two seed and and um, you know leaving a lot to be desired and DFM actually outplaying them I think in that one um, were they on the same side of the bracket maybe they weren't maybe DFM were I'm trying to remember where DFM were no I think they were on the EG side in Worlds 2022 uh, 100 Thieves Rainbow Seven I mean Rainbow Seven got the upset I know in the in the Discord I said prior to it my prediction was 100 Thieves two one and on my prediction video, I said, I think Summit can take a game. And I said on the Discord, and there's some pushback to that. But Summit dominated Sniper in this series. I mean, 
just ran him right over. Even in game one, when 100 Thieves won, Jax was ahead significant gold. Um, an 850 gold lead at the end of laning phase and had over a 2, 2.5k gold lead as the late game went along, but he just couldn't overcome his teammates in, in game one. Um, you know, the 100 Thieves were, were playing very well. Quid was playing very well on the way. But as the series went along, Rainbow Seven were able to be competitive. And hell, even in game one, on the Draven, for example, um, Rainbow Seven were in a good spot. I mean, they got early kills on the Draven. Now they threw the game, but that's what you want, right? That's the best case scenario for a Draven is to get them ahead. Um, but, but it didn't really pan out. Game two... On the Ezreal, CEO struggled, but Summit on the Renekton was a big difference maker. Adi, very strong. Uh, I guess it's not Keen, it's uh, Kana, possibly, is how it was being pronounced on the on the uh, broadcast. Kana on the Oriana played a great game, too, um, alongside the Nocturne. I mean, obviously, a Wombo combo that is hard to um, overcome. And despite Lions inting his face off this entire series for Rainbow Seven, they were able to get past that in Game 2. Um, game 3, uh, you know, Quid. I don't know who's responsible for the Vex pick, but they may be the MVP for Rainbow Seven because that was absolutely terrible. Um, I know I saw some um, content creators say that it was also terrible. And it looked bad uh, when we saw it. Uh, Quid being caught out a couple times. And then literally at one point, I think being 0-8 before he got his first kill. Um, ugly. Ugly performance uh, in Game 3. And we also have to keep in mind, too, though, these are young players on 100 Thieves in, in the solo lanes. Um, and very inexperienced on the international stage in general. Only River coming into this event with um, international experience. So in a Game 3 in a matchup against Rainbow Seven, where frankly, Rainbow Seven has nothing to lose. Uh, you know, going into this, I'm sure at least as far as Latin America, maybe Summit may feel a certain type of way because he played in the LCS, but the other four I could see going into game three saying, what do I have to lose? You know, people expect me to lose. We're 100 Thieves, a lot of pressure is on them because are North America really going to lose to Latin America in this matchup? And, and it came to fruition. They did. They struggled. And maybe the pressure did get to those players outside of River. I thought Sniper played okay on the Quesante in the late game team fights. The last one, absolutely not. However, he, in my opinion, lost them that the, that fight. And which, I mean, Kana was so strong on the LeBlanc, it was hard to overcome. But, I mean, River was, River was playing well enough that, honestly, I thought he could have turned that game around um, on the Viego. It, that performance in game three for River was, like, MVP worthy for me. Um, sometimes the losing team has the MVP. Um, and honestly, there aren't many players in the world that I like watching more than River when it comes to trying to carry a team that has no business winning. I don't know what it is. And I think back to his PSG days and some of the matchups that he had to overcome and carry, even when he did play with Dignitas and Golden Guardians in the LCS as well. Uh, you know, just trying really hard to overcome the odds. I mean, this squad was a damn anchor in Game 3. Isla looked terrible on the Nautilus. Um, it was it was ugly. It, it really was. Um, you know, Tomo was okay, but then saved Flash for 2025 in the last um, team fight when he got picked off by CEO. And actually, interestingly enough, CEO... In this series, going into the Ezreal game in Game 2, he'd only won once in his career on the champion in 10 games. No better time to win a second time. But then in Game 3, he um, actually led in damage. Which, watching the game, and if you didn't look at the stats and you just watched the game, you'd think Kana led in damage, led in everything because of the LeBlanc and how many kills he had, the Magi's and all that shit. But really, CEO led the team in damage. Not by a lot, but he's actually, I mean, I think a lot of people would be surprised to see that he did. Um, Summit was the MVP for the series because he dominated all three games, like even in the loss. Um, you know, that's that's a thing. I'm trying to think, who would have been game series one MVP? Probably Levi. No, Kiea. Kiea on the or, or, Aurora. Um, but... I mean, I don't know what to really think about 100 Thieves going forward. This is... Um, 
So when you have really young, inexperienced players, and more so the solo laners and how young they are, sniper especially, is still a kid, um, you end up in a situation where this matchup and losing it could just take any confidence these guys had and just wipe it away. And uh, they, I could see them bowing out. I could see, I there, I could see them being. I mean, I already going into this event, I picked 100 Thieves to move on, but I shed a ton of doubt on 100 Thieves and Mad Lions Koi because I thought that there were weaknesses on both teams. Does that mean I expected them to lose Rainbow Seven? No, I predicted 100 Thieves to win. Full disclosure, I thought they'd win today, uh, but to see them lose like this, um, this is entirely within the realm of possibility of them not making it out and and not and, and going home um this is that angle and now that they've lost and, and might have no confidence going into a matchup probably against uh soft bank hawks i mean should they be able to beat that team probably but i mean evie's been here before this has been here before and i mean 100 thieves outside of river really haven't Coaching staff haven't either, which is another thing. That, uh, well, head coach in Golden Glue. I think Spooks is the assistant, and he's Golden Guardians. He's had uh, opportunities last year. Um, so Rainbow Seven win, and for some reason somebody commented Latin America is better than LCS in, in my comment section. And, okay, I everyone just assumes because I'm from North America that I'm an LCS fan. It's one of the most wild things. I will say this, though, that is hype. And I mentioned it in the Discord, and people mentioned it on broadcast as well. Rainbow Seven beating 100 Thieves is massive for 2025. And that now LCS fans that are now going to become America's fans have to respect the Latin American champion. Can't just assume they're going to finish 7th of 7 teams or 8th of 8 teams or whatever because they actually are beating your 3rd seed. They are going to be a threat. And you have to respect them, and they should have respected him. Summit is, we've seen him, he had a win, He has a positive career win rate in the LPL. He's went to regional finals two out of three years in the LCK. One LCS MVP. Whether people think he's washed or not, those things speak for themselves. The rest of the team on Rainbow 7, Adi, I mean, hell, Kuroka, I don't take, I'm not taking him over Adi after today. I know I had a lot of people in the comment section upset about that, too. Um, just going to drive that home that that's clearly one way. Now, preview for tomorrow. Uh, Mad Lions, Koi, PSG. These squads cross paths in uh, 2021 at MSI. Uh, El Yoya was on uh, Mad, and Maple was still on PSG at the time before he went to uh, the LPL. In four best of ones... Mad Lions would win three of the four. El Yoya went 10, 9, and 34 against River, who was on PSG at the time. And Maple would go 5, 11, and 22 into Humanoid. Those were the uh, matchups. That's going to be a fun one. Um, Mad have to play Clean League of Legends, or PSG will check them. You know, many think, oh, well, PSG lost to Pain Gaming, so they're probably going to struggle tomorrow and this, that, and the third. We think back to how PSG lost to FlyQuest to start MSI 2024 and then got out and beat FlyQuest to go to the main event and then take BLG to five games. So this notion that just PSG are defined by their first series, I think, is what somebody would do if they really just couldn't think beyond five minutes prior. Um... Gam Esports and Rainbow Seven. These guys have crossed paths a couple times last year in 2023. The most recent time was at Worlds, where Gam would win 2 0. Levi would go 10 3 and 24 in that matchup, 19% of damage. Adi, 2 6 6 and 12% of damage in the loss. Every other matchup is different. Um, the solo laners for. Uh, um, Rainbow Seven are no longer, I believe, Myru. I don't know where Myru went. I know Bong went to play, I think, back in, in uh, Turkey. But I don't recall if, um, or actually EMEA, I don't know what region he was, what team he was playing for. He might have been playing for a Saudi team. 
Um, Myru, I don't remember where he went, um, but he's not in... It's not anywhere I remember. I think he went tier two. And then the bot lane of Gam, I don't know if they were implicated in that. Well, I, I think... I can't recall if they're suspended or not due to the Vietnam deal from earlier this year. So that happened. Uh, but Levi led, but uh, in both games, he dominated Adi. Got ahead. About 450 gold, 13 CS, 1165 XP. Not a big surprise that Diffie there. Excuse me. Summit into Kiea. We're looking at the two best top laners in uh, minor region play at this event. Uh, Levi into Adi should be Levi favored mid lane. I mean the way Kana played today, he could beat um, Emo for sure. Bot lane duo the way well I don't know the bot lane is going to be a coin flip. This is this is defined by the top side for Gam. So <coughs> we'll see if they can pull it off. Um, but that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe to the channel. For daily League of Legends content, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube supporter, and hope to see you again tomorrow.